of it all, the leftist, the uh, the the, far, the furthest left woman, so-called rabbi could ever find to disgrace Judaism even further. He's embracing every far left doctrine imaginable. It's beyond anything that a college would be doing. This is how bad this is, and there's no opposition. Okay, I made my point. I've editorialized enough. And he gave a speech this morning saying the United States is attacking the Islamic State harder than ever. Listen to this one. Trying to calm Americans about terrorism for the third time in three weeks, President Obama, who speaks loudly and carries a limp stick, said that the U.S.-led coalition is attacking the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq harder than ever? Really? Then why are they still operating? You could have defeated Nazi Germany in less time if you had a real war leader instead of speak loudly and carry a limp stick. The only people that Obama saves his viciousness for are the American people, the taxpayers, and those in the Republican Party who don't knuckle under to him. Otherwise... What do you got to say? He took Roosevelt's talk softly and carry a big stick and reversed it. Talk loudly and carry a limp stick. That's what we see. And it goes on and on and it gets worse and worse by the day. But look, most people listening to the show are not listening to the show right now. They're packing. They're buying presents. They're scanning uh, shopping lists. They got to remember all their relatives and friends and colleagues and parties to go to. They don't care about Obama or illegal aliens or Islamos coming in. They don't care about any of that. Nah. It's the presents. Now, what did I buy Molly? What do I have to buy Billy? When am I due at Johnny's party? What's this about Islam? Oh, I know nothing about it. San Bernahuno? San Bernahuno? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287. <laughs> to say no to the darkness of Islamophobia and homophobia and transphobia and racism and anti-Semitism and all the other an an isms that dare to dim our hope. All right, turn it off. Turn it off. It's why Jews fled the synagogue. Why doesn't she add Christophobia to the list? I guarantee you she's a Christophobic. I can guarantee you she fears Christians more than anything else in her life. A psycho. So that's who's invited to the White House for a Hanukkah party. A left-wing fanatic, Susan Talv, a, a, a suicidal false rabbi from St. Louis. Unbelievable to me what I'm witnessing, but it gets better. Wait. If you want to have a good entertainment, go to michaelsavage.com. I dug this picture up because you're not going to believe it. Headline, U.S. judge sworn into office on Quran. Okay, unto itself, it's crazy because this is not a Muslim nation. It's founded on the Bible, not on the Quran. But aside from that insanity... Wait until you see what she wears on her head. Looks like a dead cat. She's wearing something on her head that looks like a dead leopard skin or a dead cat. Take a look at the fool. New York's newest seventh municipal court judge for the, uh, I don't know where that is, for the uh, seventh municipal district court judge for the Brooklyn Borough, a Muslim woman, has turned to the Quran to swear in to her seat. Now, the question is, is it even legal to swear in on a Quran? When did that become legal? But secondly, she looks deranged. She's wearing a dead cat on her head. Looks like a leopard skin. Well, what is this about? What is this, a mockery of what a judge? If you were doing Saturday Night Live 15 years ago, and you wanted to mock what America would look like when, it, when everyone had... Let's say someone released a gas that made everybody crazy and smile all the time. This is the picture of this face you'd put on that television show. If you were doing a Saturday Night Live skit in the year 2000, showing what would happen when a psychopathic left-wing college professor would become president, you'd put the picture of Obama on, on, on Saturday Night Live and everyone would have a screaming laugh. There wouldn't be an actor who would not be laughing hysterically, rolling in the aisles. If, oh, you get the picture. You get the picture. When did this nation become a Muslim nation that you can swear on a Quran? I mean, is that, is that legal? Well, when did that become legal? I don't get it. Let's see. Trump, 41%. You know, I am so bored of these polls. I'm sick of it already. This thing with the caucus in Iowa. I, You know, I'm, I'm heard on a large station in Iowa, right? What's my biggest station in Iowa? 
come on, guys, you work for the show for two years. I'm a big affiliate in Iowa, so I want to tread very carefully here. Using Iowa as a bellwether for what's going to happen when human beings in a diverse America, a multicultural America, not, let us say, overweight white pig farmers or cattle farmers or wheat farmers go to the polls, doesn't make sense to me. Why in the world is everyone paying attention to New Hampshire or Iowa when America is no longer, it's not 1864, or it's not antebellum, the antebellum time. What in the world is wrong with you people? And the biggest joke is that idiot, Jake Dirty Tapwater. This guy is so desperate for attention, this loser on CNN, that I swear to God, Saturday he started standing in an empty room in Las Vegas at a hotel where the debates are going to be tomorrow night, standing there in an empty room with a countdown clock. This is how desperate CNN has, has gone to ratings. Saturday night, Jake Dirty Tapwater was standing in an empty room in the Venetian Hotel, freezing his his ears off with a headphone microphone like there was a crowd, blabbering on and on about nothing with a clock counting down when the debates are going to de uh, begin. Now, I understand they're using Wolf Blitzowitz, Wolf Blitzowitz to, uh, to be the debate moderator, which is a, a scream. How did the Republicans let this happen? Now, I, I can tell you what it's going to be. Someone asked me, what do you think is going to happen? I said, what, do you have to be a genius to figure it out? I had him laughing on the phone last night. I said, here's what's going to happen. Blitzer's going to start attacking Trump by saying, well, uh, first question will go to Donald Trump. Hey, Mr. Trump, isn't it true that you recently called for the, the banning of Muslims coming into America? Do you, stay, do you still stand by that, Mr. Trump? Now, my answer to him would be, Wolf, let me ask you a question. How is it that you, as an Israeli Jew, are so much in favor of invading America with Muslims that you'd rather attack me than ask yourself whether your liberalism is a survival mechanism or a suicidal mechanism? Well, if I throw the question back to you, why is it not legal for a candidate to throw a dirty question back at a at a, uh, a host in a debate. Where, where did it become like you can't do it? I, that's what I would do. I mean, I would fight fire with fire. I, no, I wouldn't answer any of his questions. I'd throw them back at him. Wolf, how could it be that a man like you, whose ratings have plummeted severely, are still on television? Why are you not performing balloon tricks at an old age home in West Palm Beach, Florida? Wolf, how is it that you're still on television when you well know you're past your prime and no one believes a word you're saying? Wolf, isn't it true you've been a registered Democrat all your life? What gives you the validity to ask me anything, Wolf? And these are just the light things I would say. I, I'd get probably much hotter than that. I wouldn't put up with it. But I actually advised Donald Trump not to even go to the debate. An empty chair would give him a higher rating than going there and being abused by Chris Christie, the blimp. They're going to, have, they're going to all attack him. That's all they're going to do. And then what's the difference about these debates? What difference do they really make anyway? How come they're giving Hillary Clinton a pass who destroyed the whole Western world? Old Blitzer, I'd say, Blitzer, how come you're so tough with me and you don't ask one question about Hillary Clinton's disastrous foreign policy with regard to the Arab Spring? How is it that you can be so biased and blind and still be in business, Wolf? I don't understand. Those are the questions I would ask. But the Republicans don't seem to get it because they're part of the establishment. They want the amenities of the election. You know, one day I'm going to do a little show on how much money they make off these things. You don't understand this. You ask, why would a guy like Christie or some of the others still be in the campaign when their, excuse me, when their numbers are so low? Do you have any idea how many tens of millions of dollars are coming into their campaign funds just for staying in the elections? You say, well, I know, but they can't touch it. Oh, no, they can't touch it. But it's sort of like a government within a government. What they do with that money is they spread it around amongst friends and cronies and family members, polling data, travel, uh, this, that, tens of millions of dollars. Do you know how much money is made by the ad agencies and the bundlers on these things, which is why they keep people who will never, ever make it to the final, uh, to the final tape in these, in these uh, campaigns? Anyway, what is this about the primaries that matter? Do you really care what happens in Iowa? 
Do you care what happens in a little state like New Hampshire? Do you think New Hampshire represents what's going to happen in America? I mean, we're way past the Courier and Ives phase of the United States of America. It's no longer sleigh bells with, with reindeer pulling a sled, with four white people sitting in the sled, going home to a Christmas dinner. It's a different country. Who cares what New Hampshire does? It does not represent America in any way. Who cares what Iowa does? Maybe they're fine people. Maybe they give us our food. Wonderful. But they don't represent America's multiculturalism and gigantic diversity. They don't represent it at all. So how can you really know what, 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 what they mean? What do they mean? Nothing. Why do you care about this primary? I don't care about it, frankly. I am bored of it. Our elections are a farce. They've got, they go on too long. They cost too much money. They distract people from the real problems of the world. Right or wrong? Okay. WABC, Kenny, you're the first up. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? All right, Michael. And you know what? First of all, if members of the American military sang on with Christian soldiers, they'd probably get, in, they'd probably get uh, court-martialed. And you are right. These uh, primaries are It's an industry. It's a cottage industry. Tremendous amount of money changes hands. Iowa and New Hampshire have no significance whatsoever to the uh, to America to the future. Kenny, let me. You're obviously, uh, Kenny, you're you're a talk radio listener. You you really eat, drink, and sleep politics. Do you care about these primaries at all? No, these primaries are always linked up. So the establishment. Do you do you care about poll numbers that show Trump up, Cruz up, Cruz down, Trump up, Christie down? Do you care about any of those poll numbers at this point? I don't. I don't even watch the debates. They might as well throw pies at each other. I couldn't even care less. I might watch if they threw pies at each other. It's I'm, not I'm actually not going to watch. I'm not going to watch the debate tomorrow night. I've finally been invited to a, a holiday party at a Ferrari dealership, which I'm going to go to. I want to see the new cars. I'd rather look at the new cars than Chris Christie. I mean, I'd rather go look at new cars. What do I want to go there for? You know, I'll take the dog to a to a car a car showroom. You know, Kenny. All I do now is I watch car shows. I'm so bored of the news. I find I, either I watch a boxing match or a car show. I can't take it anymore. I don't watch any of the news channels. I mean, I'm not that interested in shoes and lipstick, so I don't watch Fox News. Okay. I'm not interested at all in Wolf Blitz's politics and the stupidity of the women on, on CNN. And secondly, they wear very ugly shoes on CNN. You know, they really ought to get a new shoe, shoe advisor on CNN. Maybe their ratings would go up. The worst makeup, the worst shoes, the worst hairdos in the history of the media. I don't know if I want to talk about any of this. Here's some headlines. It gets better. Obama eyes Cuba visit, says Castro is not an ideologue. Your president is so sick in the head that he thinks that you're not going to know who the dictators are. They're not an ideologue. President Obama is planning a visit to Cuba to see dictator Raul Castro, and he's calling him not a, an ideologue. Now, this is the same day that they put 300 dissidents in prison. Obama said, my hope is that sometime next year we look at the conditions there and we say, you know what? Now would be a good time to shine a light on progress that's been made, but also maybe to nudge the Cuban government in a new direction. What does he mean by that? Okay, Navy's newest ship, the USS Milwaukee, breaks down at sea. There you go. How's that for the military-industrial complex? It cost, what, $330 million or something like that? A combat ship, the USS Milwaukee, was commissioned in November. It broke down at sea on Friday. It had to be towed. Oh, God. <laughs> if this doesn't symbolize the new Navy <laughs> on the Mavis, <laughs> it had to be towed more than 40 miles to a base in Little Creek, Virginia, the Navy Times reported. The ship constructed at the Marinette Marine Corps shipyard in Marinette suffered an engineering problem while en route from Halifax, Canada to Mayport, Florida, and then ultimately its home port of San Diego according to a post on the Navy Times website. Now, being a boater and somewhat of a mechanical guy, I try to find out what caused the ship that cost $300 million to break down soon after being launched. And it said some engine filings got into a filter. That doesn't make any sense to me. First of all, where the filings come from? Unless someone threw them into the engine, into the, into the fuel. Number one. Number two, why didn't they change the filter? Usually a filter sets off a certain computer signal, especially on a ship of that uh, expense, to say that it's stuffed and it's, uh, you know, can't function as a filter anymore. So it looks like sabotage to me. But I wouldn't say that because that would be considered a conspiracy theory. Navy's newest ship, USS Milwaukee, breaks down at sea. Did you hear what I just said? 
nothing symbolizes the U.S. military better than this story. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. 